Good morning. My name is Ruth and I'm with Hey Hello Homestead. <laughs> it is morning on the farm and I am feeding the baby duck and the baby guineas. Saying good morning to Sawyer. Today is going to be a short day for me on the homestead because I have a hair appointment. I need to go get my hair cut, like professionally, like, you know, by somebody who knows what they're doing. You know, the last time that I got my hair cut was by like a professional was maybe three years ago, four years ago, something like that. I don't know. So I'm super excited. I don't even know, should I do bangs? I, oh, it's so exciting. But every morning, one of the main things I gotta do is change out the water, because Coco the duck, when ducks eat, they actually have to filter the food through these little, these little channels underneath their tongue. And so that's why they're getting their water so messy all the time because they're just kind of swishing their food around in the water. You can see him doing it right now. He gets some food, filters it with the water. Gets some food, filters it with the water. I mean, seriously, that water, I just changed it and he made it that dirty already. She, I keep saying he, I hope it's a boy. No, I hope it's a girl. I hope it's a girl. Coco, be a girl. This is something that I do like twice a day, but today Jeremy's gonna have to do it when he gets home from work because I'm gonna be in town all day. I gotta go to work after I get my hair done, but I wanted to show you how cute the guineas are. So these guys are like in their last stage of being super cute. They're getting ready to lose their head feathers and some of them have already done that a little bit. And Coco is getting huge. Yeah. Uh, but you can see like near the bottom of their, you're not a guinea, near the bottom of their beaks, they're starting to get those little waddles that um, guineas have. So they're gonna start turning ugly cute very soon. But they are, they are growing so fast. Guineas are very difficult to keep. Usually guineas like to wander and they'll perch up in trees and um, they're actually very vulnerable to things like owls and uh, predators at night because they'll just come grab them off the tree branches. And so guineas tend to get picked off really easily. And so we've had guineas in the past and we had almost all of them wiped out at one time because they just well, I don't know if they were wiped out, but they just disappeared all at one time. We had two that we were able to save and catch. One didn't get eaten by a predator for a couple years, um, but they made that one made such a tight bond with one of the chickens that we had, um, and that chicken died that uh, the guinea just kind of went off into the woods and and never came back. And I think. I think it died of a broken heart, honestly. So one of the challenges of guineas is getting them to stay and come back to a shelter at night. It takes weeks and weeks and weeks. I've heard people do it where they keep them in like a really big dog crate for six to nine weeks inside the main coop the main chicken coop and then they can all kind of go into the chicken coop and they just learn that that's their place that they spend the night in uh, but it takes that long it's not like a couple of nights it's weeks and weeks and weeks and I just don't want to have to deal with that so my plan is actually to take the chicks the chicken chicks out of here and Coco I'm gonna be taking Coco and putting her into the duck pen and closing her in there for about a week 
to get her used to everybody that's up there, get her bonded with them. Uh, the other ducks will not be able to go into their into their habitat area, but they enjoy sleeping under the chicken coop uh, of my mother-in-law's next to the garden anyway. So uh, they'll still be locked up and secure, fenced off at night. Um, they just won't have access to their pond, which they don't hardly even use. They really just come down here um, and spend the day down here, which is really interesting. <laughs> and so uh, I am going to then just have the guineas in this coop. So I'm thinking that having the guineas in this coop, um, they've already kind of turned this into their home. They already kind of know this as their place. They've been in here for weeks. Uh, I'm going to keep them in here. And, and I think this is just going to be the guinea house. And uh, if we need to make another nursery, you know, we need to make another nursery. And that's fine. I mean, it's really not that hard. And so... Um, they will not be in here during the day. They will, they've, they are in the process of being trained to come back here every night um, by just establishing that this is their home so well. I mean, they've been kept in here day and night for, for weeks, right? Since they were baby, baby, babies. And I'm just going to leave the door open and lock them up here at night. And hopefully this will work. Hopefully this will work. I mean, it's really difficult. It is a very difficult thing. Uh, if I hadn't gotten guinea eggs to hatch uh, and therefore saving money with that, uh, we probably wouldn't have guineas because it's really not worth the cost of feed, um, the price of the chicks and stuff like that, um, just to have you lose your flock as soon as it, you let them loose to do their job. So one of the reasons why we got guineas and why it was important to us is guineas are incredible hyphen hi. you still smell like skunk how is that possible okay 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 hi hi so um guineas are really uh they're excellent foragers and when i say that you can keep chickens to get rid of ticks and fleas and you know, stuff like that. But a guinea will do so much better than them. I think it's in the thousands of ticks that they eat every day. And so if you have a few guineas, and we have 14, um, if you have a few guineas, you're getting rid of tons of ticks and they go everywhere. Like I said, they wander. So they're gonna be going all over this mountainside. They're gonna be going around the house. They're gonna be going up on the mountain where the goats are gonna be, where the chickens are. They're gonna be going out in the field. They're gonna be getting all the ticks. And that just sounds really wonderful to me. Uh, I don't have to want to worry about ticks. Uh, my husband has Lyme's disease. My father-in-law has Lyme's disease. My brother has Lyme's disease. I don't wanna deal with that. So, um, so that's what we're doing. That's why we got them. That and guinea eggs. I don't know if you knew this, but I just learned this actually uh, from a friend of mine named Lucy that guinea eggs are actually um, uh, hypoallergenic, I guess would be the word. But if you are allergic to chicken eggs, you should have no problem having guinea eggs. And they're about the same size. They're a little bit smaller, but they're about the same size. They're like this, a small chicken egg. And so if anybody in your family has problems with that, you can give them guinea eggs. Uh, if you have a stall where you sell things at the farmer's market, you can market your guinea eggs as hypoallergenic, right? So there's a market there. Always trying to find ways to make money, right? Okay, so that's the guineas. That and they're just so cute. I love guineas. I think they're, I think they're really adorable. Um, even when they're super ugly, <laughs> they're so ugly that they're cute. <laughs> So we have mostly the black pearl guineas, but we do have one lavender guinea, and she's right there in the middle, perched on top of the wood. Um, we hatched the one lavender. Uh, the lady who sent us the eggs said that they had just recently hatched one themselves, and so there's a chance that we'd get one. I'm super excited that we got one. Uh, the black pearl ones are, are great. 
Uh, they're just gonna keep getting darker. You see the brown on them right now, but it's not gonna be brown forever. Uh, it's gonna basically turn into that black and white striped situation that they've got right there. And they make the loudest squawking noises that you'd ever hear in your life. Um, some people don't like them just because they're so loud, um, but they are so good at tick management. And they're also kind of like an alarm system for your homestead. So if you, you know, if there's a predator that comes onto the homestead, um, if there's a stranger that comes onto the homestead, if there's a snake or anything like that, they will kind of gather near it, not close enough that they're going to be in harm's way, um, and they will just squawk and squawk and squawk, and you will know that there's something different going on, something wrong. So um, I'm going to change that water again now that it seems like Coco is done eating. Uh, give them some fresh stuff. But uh, they're really good at that. They have also been known to defend the uh, properties from snakes, and they'll kind of go after a snake and, um, and either scare it away or actually kill it. Hopefully they don't do that to our black snakes. And they just do that with the, the poisonous ones. But they are, they are excellent foragers. They actually prefer it, rather than me putting it, the food in here, they prefer for me to scatter it on the ground. But we just had rain and so it's kind of wet. And uh, this, is, this is the kind of uh, food that will ferment very quickly if it gets wet and mold because it's just so fresh and so alive. And so I'm gonna keep that off the ground today. They can eat it just like that fine, as you can see. So those are our guineas. And we're looking at their forever home right now. And I think that they're gonna like it. I think this is good. I hope it works. I hope, fingers crossed. So I was talking to my husband the other day and I told Jeremy that I want, um, a quail habitat, right? Uh, we've got uh, 36 eggs. I think we've got 36 eggs in the incubator right now. We've got about 14 days left until they hatch. We have one quail already that hatched and I want to kind of build an aviary for them. So what I want is for it to be right here though and I want it to look probably uh, maybe circular or something like that. And I want it to go all the way to the ground and I want it to be pretty and for it to be very tall so that they can have branches in there to perch on and uh, little little huts in there so that they can have, um, so that they can have places where they can, they can nest if they want to. Although I'm pretty sure that the quail that I have are not gonna be very good mothers. Um, uh, from what I hear, these quail just kind of, the mothering instinct has been bred out of them. And so they're kind of like ducks and they just kind of lay their egg wherever they are. But it'll be there for them if they want it. So um, that's what I want right there. So my mother gave me two oak leaf hydrangeas, which happen to be native, which is really nice. Um, if you can plant natives, do that. I, I have nothing against... Um, uh, non-native plants. In fact, I'm going to be doing a video about that soon. I'm making sure that I have all my resources and my quotes and, and, um, everything like that first, uh, put together because I know this is going to be a controversial video, but I want to stick one of the, the hydrangeas right here behind the lavender. And then I want to put one down here by my little, my little lamp stand. And so then the quail habitat will be in the center there. And we'll just kind of have this, you know, garden, lavender, hydrangea, the clematis climbing, you know, the apiary, and another hydrangea uh, right there. And I think it'll look real nice. It'll kind of block this, um, the gas tank. Not super excited about, you know, having that as like a feature, but it's super important. You know, you, you can't not have that. It's important. And you got to have it clear so that people can get to it. So um, that's what we're doing. I'm going to try to bury those right now because that's about all I have time for today.
the oak leaf hydrangeas, they get real big. Uh, so this is just gonna be really, really nice. Um, the front garden area here is looking really good. It's coming together really nicely. It's starting to look lush and, and uh, oasis-like. And I just, I'm very excited about that. So. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you for joining me this morning. If you could hit the like button, the notification bell, and the subscribe button, that would help me out a lot. Um, I'm trying to get videos out as often as possible, mostly every day. Uh, sometimes life gets crazy and so I miss a day or two, but pretty much every day I'm gonna get a video out. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day and stay blessed.